I really just experienced the whole thing where I filmed half of a video and then found out that it was all filmed in slow motion and so it was totally useless, which is great when you're feeling already super behind in your filming schedule. And I filmed another video totally in slow motion. <sighs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna try not to speed through this too much because I already just filmed half this video, so I don't really wanna say it again, but it's okay, we're gonna do it. Today we're talking about the 10 things that I learned with my first three months of being on YouTube. As of filming this, it's been about three months of me trying to make this an actual active hobby. Not a career, not a job, you know, all those things, not a side hustle even. Like I just want to do this, you know, for fun. Do it as a hobby so anyway um i just want to maybe shed some light on what my first three months were like trying to do that and maybe this can give you some realistic advice from someone who's been doing it for three months if you're thinking about starting a channel or so you can feel like hey i'm going through that same thing too because i just started a channel a couple months ago too so anyway let's get right into it number one there is a lot more effort that goes into youtube than you think Case in point, I just filmed half of a YouTube video. If I didn't just tell you that, I would just be sitting here rambling, telling you again, and you'd be like, she seems a little antsy, but you would not know that I just sat here for a while wasting my time blabbing and, uh, you know, <laughs> filming this whole video. It's the aesthetics, it's the planning, it's the writing of a script, it's the editing, the editing, editing, editing. I. It, it, that takes up so much time, so much more time than anybody would ever realize. And that's great. That's people's jobs to make you that content so that you can just kind of mindlessly watch it maybe or learn a little something. But there's just a lot that goes into it. And I have a lot of respect for the people who are doing it here and not making money, especially not that if you are making money, like, hey, props to you. That's awesome. But it's hard to when you work a nine to five like I do sit here on your Saturday by yourself and film a video and be like, I wonder if, you know, no one's gonna watch it or if anyone's gonna like it or if I'll even like it when I sit there and I edit it. So yeah, anyway, there's a lot of work. Number two, it's exciting when you get views and it's disappointing when you don't. I post a lot of shorts here on YouTube. Um, we, that's what I've been able to be consistent at. I like filming them. And for example, an average short for me gets about 400 views, which is like, not a lot, but like, that's what I've come to expect. But if 200 people view it, I am like, oh gee, like, what did I do wrong? Like, why do you guys hate me so much? Actually, am I not funny? Am I like, is it the algorithm or is it the people that hate me? And then if I randomly get one that gets 600 views, it's like, woo, I'm doing something right. I should, you know, I'm hilarious. I should keep making these. And then the next day, you know, you get 30 views and it's like, what? You just gotta try not to tie your self-worth to that, which is very much easier said than done, but I'm trying to make sure that I maintain that. Just some realism in mind and go, hey, you know what? If 30 people viewed that short, that's a lot more people than I would have shown if I just like showed them my silly little video I filmed on my phone and maybe somebody laughed, you know? Number three is it can be all consuming. And this can be a bad thing or a good thing. Again, it could be a bad thing if you're just like, oh, how do I get the views? How am I gonna grow? How am I gonna da 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 da? Which can happen. But I actually think it's been a good thing for me because it's been like ideas. I see something and I'm like, ooh, could I use that? Could I, what could I do? And I know if you look at my channel, you might be like, this is sparking creativity. There's not a lot here, but I have scripts. I have things planned. I just haven't had the time to sit down and film them because it takes time and editing takes time and I have again a full-time job and I'm also a part-time wedding videographer and so between all that and I'm trying to get ready to move it just like I remember watching youtubers now and then being like sorry about the delay in the video I just moved and it's like okay cool but like no it's like they have their whole lives going on and it yeah anyway Sorry, coming back to the point, it can be all consuming, but it can be a good thing because I'm like, ooh, like I could do this, I could do that. And it just, it's sparking inspiration, creativity, imagination, all of those things. So I think that that's a really positive thing as long as you're not trying to make it this like blow up overnight, because that I don't think you'll be happy doing. But if you can make content that is making you happy and just do that, then I think that you will feel inspired and you'll want to do things. 
Okay, number four, it's also like, I feel like, duh, but remaining consistent is really, really hard. For me, the goal I set for myself, I didn't even set like a goal for long form videos. I just was like, I'm gonna try to post a short every single day. And sometimes I take them down because they only get a couple of views, but I tried to do that. And even posting a short every day, seven days a week, you'll be like, oh man, I've got you, like you plan it all out. And then you're like, oh, Man, I have no thoughts. I have no plans for the next thing. And you're like, oh no, let me let me try to find something. And I know it, it's a very simple thing. Like that's a very simple thing to create. But you know, it. I think it's like baby steps and trying to work on that consistency. But the YouTubers again who put out a video consistently every single week, I just am like, wow. Especially if it's not their full time thing and they're just doing it because they love to do it. Number five, I think is kind of a reality check because there are a lot of videos here on YouTube about how to grow your channel. But newsflash, a lot of those are totally useless because they'll be like, do this, do this, blah, blah. Their advice is coming from a place of someone who makes videos about giving advice. So people go to that because they want to grow their channel, but those same people will post a vlog sometimes and no one will watch it. They'll post something else and no one will watch it. It's those tips and tricks videos that people are looking for. And I think that you really have to take everything they say with a grain of salt. And honestly, yes, you can pick up some things from them, but just start posting, just start doing your own thing. And I don't know. I just think that you gotta be careful because when you wanna go to start a YouTube channel, there is definitely a like a temptation to be like, okay, let me, let me strategize. Let me watch all these videos, blah, blah, blah. I had to like cut that out because I was like, this is ridiculous actually because their strategy is totally different than mine. So they don't even know what they're talking about really. So it's a weird concept, but just don't fall too far. Just don't fall too far down the rabbit hole. Why was that so hard for me to say? Of those types of videos on YouTube. Just start, you got it. Number six is I should have started sooner. I fell behind. But also I'm glad I didn't start sooner because I didn't have as much internet literacy and I, you know, people end up in weird situations. They, you know, are all of a sudden uh, influencers overnight and they don't know how to protect themselves. They don't know how to keep their private life private. They don't know how to do the whole Hannah Montana thing and have the, you know, Miley by day, Hannah by night, you know, type of thing. Um, and I'm really glad that I'm able to do that. So I guess it's like, I wish I had started sooner because I'm like, oh, imagine where I could have been if I would started a year ago. But um, I'm also glad that I didn't start when I was like 16, you know, posting on the internet because that was a, I post geeky things, but I feel like it could have been a lot worse if I started posting when I was 16 and I had to answer for all of those things through college, through uh, starting working in the real world, things like that. But that is definitely impending thoughts always of, man, I should have started sooner. That's basically number seven is I'm glad though for my own safety that I didn't start sooner. So those two kind of go hand in hand together. So, but a lot of the those YouTube advice videos be like, it's never too late. You just gotta start, just start. But I'm just gonna tell you like, yeah, if you started sooner, you would have probably been further along. Like that's the hard truth of it. But also if you were young in particular, it's probably for the best that you didn't. Like number seven is like, it's okay that you didn't start sooner because you were still forming who you are and you didn't have to grow up in front of an audience. And I think that that is something that is a blessing really in itself. Number eight, you feel embarrassed a lot, like a lot. I, anytime I post a video, I'm like, someone I know is gonna see this and I am gonna wanna crawl into a hole and like, it is so embarrassing. I feel so embarrassed <sighs> every time I post, every time I post. In particular, like these long form videos are more embarrassing than even the shorts. Cause the shorts is like, oh, ha ha, like whatever. No, like this type of video right here. I, sometimes my family will watch them. Sometimes my friends will watch them. And even if they're being supportive, I'm just like, mm -mm, I don't want to hear about the fact that you watched my video. I'm like, I'm just like, no, that's okay. We don't need to talk about it. It doesn't exist. Just be aware that if you start a YouTube channel, you might feel very embarrassed a lot of the time. And some people will be like, it's okay to be embarrassed. It is okay to be embarrassed, but I'm just telling you, you're gonna be embarrassed. 
like it just comes with the territory hate to tell you I'm less of a like let's beat around the but no girl or boy you're gonna be embarrassed but that's okay number nine you got a plan if you want to grow um we hit 100 subscribers in the first three months which I am oh so happy about so so proud thank you to all of you guys who are subscribed to the channel you guys like it really is encouraging every time I see that someone has subscribed but I don't think even I have grasped like a true plan for growth I don't have a niche um, I would like to sit down and have a conversation about that my niche it's just like life content, not lifestyle content, life content for regular people. Like that's, that's kind of what I thought. Like I was like, I could just make content, things that I'm learning, share it, research it, you know, like da da da, those types of things. But I don't even think I have fully planned enough to like start actually making this into a thing, but that's okay. Again, like when I talk about something that's okay, it's okay that you don't have a plan. If you just want to start a YouTube channel, just start a YouTube channel feel that embarrassment, feel some excitement when you get the views and sad when you don't get the views and just go on the roller coaster. Just ride those waves, baby. You need a plan if you're gonna grow. Preaching to the choir. And number 10 is I don't care how many of those YouTube videos, like I said, about like blow up overnight, do this and in a month you'll blah blah. No. It will take you a long time to get monetized, okay? Three months does not sound like a lot. Like I'm just sitting here telling you, you might have just clicked on this video. Maybe you are somebody who has been watching me for three months, but likely maybe you clicked on this video and you're like, oh, you know, three months. I want you to realize where you were three months ago. I want you to realize how much has happened in three months of your life and how long of a time that is. And it feels like a very long time to be pouring yourself into something. And then again, to be like, oh, like I got four views on a video that I spent hours of my life on. What am I even doing? You've got to love it. You've got to do it because you want to and not because you're trying to be rich out here on YouTube because you're not, you're not. I mean, maybe you will be, but I'm not. I'm not getting monetized overnight. I've done the calculations, right? I'm like, it's gonna take me four years to get monetized. Cause you need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. We're at a hundred subscribers. Like what, is, I mean, it's gonna take me four years. Maybe if I remain consistent, I don't know that I'm gonna remain consistent for four years. I don't know that that's possible you guys, but you know, just go into it with that mindset and you'll probably feel a lot better because you know, you just can't put all the value on getting monetized. Just have fun. Those are my 10 things I learned in my first three months of YouTube. If you watch to the end, I'm so surprised and I thank you so very much. Make sure to comment below if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel or if you have started a YouTube channel recently and you know, maybe we can all just be on this fun little adventure together. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Starbucks and edit a wedding video because that's my other part of my job and that's what I get to do on my Saturday. Peace out guys. Bye.